Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, you there? Yeah, I'm about to say a Okay. The reason why I'm bringing words one is to prove to you that this is talking to Christians. Yeah, I know, yeah, this is true, Christian. Okay. So then let's go there. This is to the church in emphasis. All right. And here he's telling John to write these things down. These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and who walks among the seven golden limestones. All right, now Jesus is addressing this church. And here's what he's telling the Christian. The one, this is a regenerated Christian. He's not a phony, he's not a fraud. He's a real Christian with the Holy Spirit. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people that you have tasted those who claim, you have tested those to cl who claim. The word claim, but also what he claims yeah. to be an officer, yeah. who, who claims to be apostles, but are not. All right. And have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. Okay, Jesus is commanding him. All right, that you're doing a great job. In verse four, he's saying something over here. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. All right. Okay. Now, this is, I believe, the scriptures referring to people who was in genuine faith. All right. And then later on, change doctrine. Do the things you did at first. Whatever this Christian was doing at first was beautiful, was commendable. Had a love problem. He started going to white skull. He was not around the brothers, not reading the word, not praying. All right. And what happens to him? It says that he's grown his love. All right. And then he says, consider how far you have fallen. Now, you guys say that the word repent means to believe in Jesus. And repent just simply means to change your life. Right. But the word repent means to believe in Jesus. I repented and I believe in Jesus now. Well, yeah, that if you doesn't... didn't believe in Jesus, then repenting would mean to believe in Jesus. Okay, that's a lie. Because this is a that's Christian a and Jesus is telling him to repent. Repent doesn't mean one thing. Repent just simply means a change of mind from one thought to another. If I okay. just, if I no, plan on eating, wanted... if okay, I wanted to change. eat turkey I'll today, wait. if I wanted Can to I eat... My wife eating turkey? If I wanted to eat turkey today, then I changed my mind to eat beef. I'm repentant. So you want to put it in those like intent? You want to play those type of games, Tony? It's not type of games, I mean, In the Bible, you know who's the person? I'm talking about hell and fire. Why is Jesus telling them to repent? Because they're doing wrong. They're doing something wrong. Okay, he's doing something wrong. Let's go to Revelation Street. No, wait, don't stay there for a minute. Okay, let's stay there. for a minute. Okay. Now, he said if you do not repent, I will remove your lampstand, correct? Yes. All right, do you know what the lampstand represents? A lot of people, theologians, claim to be the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. All right. There's nothing, there's nothing to guess here. Go back one chapter. Actually, go back only a couple verses. And he tells us what it is. Go back to chapter one, to the last verse, which is literally one verse back. Right. All right, go to one, uh, 120, Revelation 120. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, is this? Is this the seven stars are the angels of the seven church, 
at the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Okay. That word angel just simply means the messenger. The seven stars are the messengers of the seven churches. In this case, it's literally the messenger of a physical church that was back in those days, in the first century AD. And the seven lampstands are seven churches. There were literally seven churches in seven different cities. Santiwatambe, Safka has a church in LA, John John has a church in Chicago, uh, Milano has a church in Texas. And it is, they were literally seven different locations with seven physical churches. And when he says the angel of the church at this city, he's simply talking about the pastor or the leader of that specific church in the first century AD. Now, the first century AD, the church in the city or the town of Ephesus were known as the Church of the Ephesians. And when Revelation 2, when Jesus says, repent or I will remove your lampstand, he's saying I will remove your church. The same way he did for, I hate to say it, I don't want to be judgmental, but what happened when Pastor Savka fell into sin? The Lord removed his lampstand, took it away from him, no more church. What happened when Pastor Douglas fell into sin? What was the great Wow, if you do not do this, I'm going to take away your church, boy. That's exactly what it says. Is, it, is that not what it says? When, when, when the Bible says that Jesus died for the church, that he died for the building, the bricks, the floors, the roof. For the people. But the in people. this case, in this case, in Revelation 2, he's talking about that specific gathering of people. He will remove that gathering. They don't have that place anymore. Bottom line, punishment. that is the punishment. That is the punishment. Okay, you have, you have a, a logical debate, all right, which I don't see. But at that. first, at first you were saying that, you, at first you were saying that the last said could represent the Holy Spirit, but... Now Jesus is taking away something from you, trust me, it's, it's, it's hell and fire. Bilana, we just read it what it is. But he lost his first love. But, but we just read person, it. But we just read person, it. Let me ask you a question. Do you think if you don't love Jesus, you're going to go to heaven? If I don't love Jesus, I'm going to go to heaven? Yeah. Why, why would I not love Jesus if I know the gospel? I asked you a simple question to answer yes or no. If you do not love Jesus, are you going to heaven? No, because if you know the gospel, you're going, you love Jesus. It's impossible not to. there's many people that know the gospel. But if Jesus is telling you, to you say lost it. your first love. I hate to say it, but first. I don't believe you know the gospel. I'm not saying that to be sent to be out. It's the God. That's, that's fine. It's your opinion. But he fell out of love with Jesus. That's not what you think says. he's... But that's exactly what it says. That's not what it says. He lost his first love of Jesus. Let me go back to prove you wrong over and over and over again repeatedly. I hold this, yet I hold this against. Yet you have a, you have a, no, I'm in Revelation 2, hold on. Revelation 2 and 4. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. What love is he talking about? He's talking about the love for the brethren, for the brothers, the brotherly love. Is that what you're making up? Hold on, let me show you one second. He lost his love for the brethren. <laughs> is that your, your, your commentary on it? Yeah, that is my commentary. Do you know you're wrong and you need to admit when you're wrong? I don't believe I'm wrong. Show me okay. where it says I want to say it. Accept, I want to say it except correction. Show me. Okay. If you could show me that this is talking about they fell out of love with Jesus, then I'll stand corrected. In a different version. But I have this against you. You do not love me. 
What version is that? The Trilla Boss. The, 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 the Trilla Boss version? There, there's theologians, there's scholars who wrote the Bible. There's also theologians that believe we should worship Barry. But they made the Bible. Do you think the guy who made the LLT, you're more smarter than him? Yeah, because he's not saved. I believe he's in death. Can you say the word of God? Are you more smarter than the guy who wrote the Bible? It's not about smart. He's not saved. It takes a genius. It takes a genius to do, to make a Bible that sells millions and billions of copies. All right, what about the Rainbow Bible? The, is that, is that a saved person? If it, if it doesn't fall accordingly to the scripture, no, it's not. And this one doesn't follow according. So I believe the man who wrote the NLT. You're a very stubborn mule, Tony, with all due respect. All right, there's more versions. Let me read them to you. So okay. is every version good of the Bible? Do you want to go into the Greek and Hebrew? It's not about Greek and Hebrew, it's context. Do you, want to go to, do you want to go into the Greek and the body you can prove wrong? No, because... I'm off, I'm off at the floor with you, but you're not realizing it. First of all, be loud if you're going to act sharp and I'm say... Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If you're, you're going to act sharp and say... Yeah, mop, right. I'm not trying to act sharp. You're I'm not trying. mopping the floor with me, you're reading the Bible. So if you're going to act sharp, right. I might have you're laying right. up on your face. I'm right, you're right, I'm sorry. That's ridiculous, it's, first of all. It's ridiculous to talk about because Tony, mopping the floor. Mean, Okay, we're reading the Word of God. Do you think that's nice? I apologize. I apologize, Tony. But Julia, that's what I'm going to tell you why you're doing it. Because there's a version that's saying you lost your love for me, and you're saying you're coming down on that bell just to make yourself right. All right, um, if you can't debate with love and with... Then there's no reason to debate it right now. The Bible talks against that. If you're here to debate it, the Chonaos, that's sin. So you might as well... And then right here. I just showed you scripture, Tony, that it says you lost your first love for me. The Bible says that you need to love me with all your heart. And why, why don't you stick with the King James? No, I'll go with the King James. I have no complaint about that. Can we stay just to the King James? I could, but I don't want to. It's, it's very hard for me to read it. It's not easy. And that's the one I'm comfortable with. I can read it. I can read the King James. I'll make it time. King James Version. That's what it says. But this is what I have against you. You do not love me now as you did at first. That's not the King James. No, no, that's the, the, the new King James. The G-N-B-U-K version. G-N-B-U-K? Okay. What's that? Uh, Good News Bible UK. So what? Yeah. King James Version, nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. ESV says, but I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had for me at first. All right, Amplified, which is the closest thing to the King James, says, but I have this charge against you, that you have left your first love. You have lost the depth of the love that you first had for me. All right? And Tony, if that's not like a problem from you, then you're just not able to receive correction. All right. First of all, I don't agree with what you're saying, but for the sake of letting it go, I stand corrected. Yes, all right. That was you. That was you. Okay, let's go to Revelation Street. All right? All right. Uh, to the angel of the church in Sardis, write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. And here's what he's saying. Pay attention. Let me, let me turn there one second. Okay. okay. Oh, but I'm not used to that. Revelation 3 to the... 3, yeah, 3, 1. All right. These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Remember 
Therefore, what you have received and heard, hold to it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis or in the church who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious, I will let them be dressed in white, and I will never blot out their name out of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge before my Father and his angels. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Now what ears is he talking about? Let me break it down for you, Tony. Wake up, verse 2. Yeah, no, let's go to verse 1. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive. What reputation does he have? He has the Bible. He's with the Roman church. All right. He says, praise the Lord. God bless you. I love you. All right. What time are we going to church? That's a reputation of being alive. All right. Jesus says, you are dead. Does he mean physical? No, because he has not died. He has not died physical. But you are dead spiritually. All right. Now he's telling them, wake up. with the end And strengthen what remains. What remains? He's still alive. All right. And is about to die, not spiritually, but physically. You're about to die physically. For I have found your deeds unfinished. You say you love Jesus, you say you have faith in him, but it's unfinished. In the sight of my God. Now he's saying to remember, he's bringing something back to remembrance. Remember, therefore, what you have received, which was Jesus Christ, and heard, which is the gospel. Hold to his fast and repent. He's doing something evil and wicked. But if you do not wake up, from your slumber and your sleep. I will come to you like a thief, and you will not know at what time I come. Why does Jesus compare himself to a thief, a chort of a man? Can you be crazy? upon the non believers like a demon that I. Exactly. Tells when Jesus comes and let's say I get left behind, he took my wife and my kids. I'll be a little chort, a chort yama. Those are for the unbelievers. No, that's for anyone who doesn't have bacon. Or can I present my case? Okay, let me finish. All right, I'll let you finish and then I'll present my case. That's fine. I will, that's fine. I will come to you like a thief and you will not know at what time I come to you. Yet, verse 4 is the key. Yet you have a few people in Sardis, you have a few people in church who have not dirtied their clothes with the filth with set, with adultery, adultery, chorimos, tabarimos. You're adding that to your topic with that. Well, this is what, this is my latest terms. Yet you have a few people inside us who have not soiled their clothes. They did not soil their clothes. They didn't make their clothes dirty. All right. Only a few people in the church is saved. Not and the whole why, church. Why are they saved? Because they just, they... Because they kept their clothes white. How did they do that? by not turning themselves into sin. And that's where you're wrong. Okay, I'll leave, I'll, leave, I'll, leave, I'll leave your case right now. That is correct. Right. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. Why? They're worthy because they're white. The one who is victorious, that, that means the person who does these things is victorious, will like them be dressed in white. And I will never blot out their name out of the person of the book of life. He's using the word blot out. The word blot out means to erase. Why is Jesus referring to, I'm not going to erase his name like I do to other people? In other words, See, you have the word erase. You have to add there. Stop that, stop there. You no, know, he's using the word erase. That's the conclusion you came to. But Moses said the same thing, do not erase their name out of the book of life, but rather erase my name out of the book of life. All right. He, may I present 
this scripture to you, and I'm going to let scripture interpret scripture. All right. And let me show you something. This is why I prefer to keep James only. Okay. Okay. Do you have access to King James? Yeah, let me get there. Let me show you why I prefer it. That's fine, let's go there. Uh, King, you want the new King James or just regular King the James? Regular King James. Okay, let's, let's read it if I could do it. I'll, I'll um, read it. Okay, go ahead. From verse, what verse? You can read from. First of all, I'm going to hit on two points. Okay. I'm going to hit on point number in verse 5, that it talks about he that overcome it. Yeah. The, the NME, you said, it said, he that is victorious. But I like this one here. I'll show you why. Okay. It says he that overcome it. I'm going to hit on that point first. Then I'm going to hit on the point where they wear the white garments. Then I'm going to hit on the point where he's like a thief in the night. Okay. okay. Now, who wrote the book of Revelation? John. John, the Apostle, correct? Yes. He's also the writer of First John, the Epistle of First John, correct? Right. right. And he's also the writer of the Gospel of John. Right. Same guy, right? Right. Look at what it says here in Revelation 3, 5. He that overcome it. I want you to make a mental note of that word. He that overcome it. Hold on a second. Jennifer, can you get that monster out of the room? I got a cat that talks. <laughs> okay. Here's what it says. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. So who wears white clothes? It's the person that overcomes, right? Right. He that overcometh, remember that word, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not buy and save out of the book. All right? Right. Now, the same writer, I want you to turn for a minute to First John, chapter 5, verse 4. All right? For whoever so is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even, even our faith. faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he believeth, he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Let's read that again. For whatsoever is born of God, this is being born again, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Now turn again to Revelation 3. It says, he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God is the overcomer. Go to Revelation 3, 5. He that overcometh, fine, here's the overcome. The same shall be clothed in white. So how do you become clothed in white? It is by believing that Jesus is the Son of God. That's it. it. Has nothing to do with stopping fornication, adultery, murder, stealing. The way you are clothed in white is by wearing the righteous robe of Jesus, by simply believing that Jesus is the Son of God. You are clothed in white, and he will not blot out your name out of the Book of Life. Was that pretty clear? I overcome. Have I overcome something? That means I did it. I overcame the devil. And how did you do that? By not obeying him. Be not him. Like... Are you ignoring first John that we just read that to overcome means to simply believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you want to read that again? Okay, let me ask you this question. It says in the verse 11 that the Jews did not come into the promised land because of disbelief. 
Okay. Is that is that right? Yeah. Okay, so it was cut off. The promised land. All right. The promised land represents heaven, and that reaching there means hell. Okay. Did the Jews believe in God? And it says they disbelieved in God. Which one is true? Did you see the cloud by day and the fire by night? Did you see the Red Sea open? Did you see bread fall from the sky, manna? All right. Did you see the angel of the Lord? Did you hear his voice from the mountains? No, they did. So there is no way in the world, one that we don't believe that God exists. That's not what the scripture said. The scripture said, he that overcome it is he that okay, believes. I'm not talking about that scripture. I'm saying it was cut off for disbelief. All right. Do you know what the word believe means? That believes in Jesus? That you will follow him and obey him. That's not what it says. I'm just going to go by what it says. I might okay, sound that, stubborn that, to you. But that's very bad. It's very stubborn because I want to tell you, tell you this. Tell me. If I say I believe in Jesus, but yet I live like the devil, I practice demonic things, do I believe in Jesus? Well, you got to show me this description. It's all over the scripture. Where? Well, give me the clear point. I'm going to give it to you, Tony. But look, honey, you never even commented on the first John 5 4. No, the John, first John 5 4 was great. It was a great cross reference. But the word believe is the problem. It's not a problem okay. because he goes further detail to say that he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. That simply just means belief. Tony, you're saying we cannot lose our salvation. That's what the Bible says. As we disown him, he will disown us. If I disown him, that means I have to accept him. All right? Who's going to disown Jesus? By the way you live. We don't even Titus. own him in the first place. How can Titus I just so it? it says that we disown him by the way we live. Paul's statement, all right, that after I preach to others, that I myself will not be disqualified. Why was Paul being scared to be disqualified to go in heaven? First John 3 9. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's seed abide in him, and he cannot keep on sinning, no, see, you because just, he is born of God. You have to read that in the King James again, because the NIV butchers it. It totally changes the doctrine. Okay, let, let, me, let me finish a couple of scriptures, and then I'll, I'll go back to them. And then be, Whoever says I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. If anyone does not remain in me, he is strung out like a broken off branch and dies to remain in Jesus. All right, Exodus 32. This is before the Bible, before the Torah, the Tanakh, before the Ten Commandments. The Lord had answered and said this, It is those who have sinned against me whose names I will remove from the book. All right, that means God puts their names and then takes them out. You right. know, there's, a, there's two different books, right? Yeah, you know there's, different a, books. there's a book of the living and yeah, the book of life. Right, right. You know, they're okay. two different, right? I know, but he doesn't, he doesn't say which book it is, but he refers to them as removing their names or blotting out their names. Now, I might be mistaken on this, which one is which, but the book of the living simply means the name of Lord. Everybody in the world starts off in the Book of the Living. You're eligible to live and receive Jesus. But the Book of Life... That's an interesting topic. Here's what it says. They are ungodly people who 
prefer to bring some of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. All right, I'm talking about salvation here. <coughs> Titus 2.12. Uh, no ungodliness or worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. It's instruction, it instructs, the Bible instructs us to say no to ungodliness and wild passions. All right? Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong, Peter. I'm not saying that it's a big thing to say. I agree that it's a terrible thing. No no, no penalty means nothing. All right? You could rob a bank, they're going to scream at you. And, you know, it's not right to rob people, but if you rob a bank, you know, they're going to yell at you. They might curse you. No, there's no penalty you guys put in sin. All right. Uh, Do you know why we say that? Why you say that? Because I believe you, you guys are false doctrines. No, I, I believe you're in a false prophet because you never even commented the first time. You didn't just basically... And I, told you, I, I told you it was a very good scripture. But you didn't even stand corrected on it. You said that the one that overcome it, the one that's dressed in white, is the one who stays away from sin. But John clearly said, the one that is wearing right, that overcome it, is the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. That has nothing to do with staying away from sin. And yet you didn't stand corrected. Uh, let me read it again. I'm trying to figure out, tell me what scripture is. Go back to the original scripture you started. Revelation 3, 5. No, the other one in 1 John. 1 John 5, 4, and 5, 5. While you're getting there, I'm going to read Revelation 3. All right? But you got to read it in King James. 1 John 5 and 4. I'm going to read it in all translations. Now, for Revelation 3, 5. He that overcome it, there's the word overcome it, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. So the one who okay. ever comes is the one who wears white. The, the person who does the will of God. No, she will talk about it. She will talk about it. That's what it means. That's what it means. No, I'm going to stick to John interpreting. Okay. Let's let John interpret. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Uh, uh, first John 5, 4? Yeah, John's going to interpret what overcoming That whoever means. is born of God overcoming. Okay, very good. Let me read different versions. Okay, the, the King James says, version, for where over, so where for over is born of God overcoming the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our fate. Is there any more? That was a five. Five. And five, okay, let me get there. Four and five. Okay. Then overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith, who is he that overcome the world, but he that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Okay. And NIV says this. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith, he who is it that overcomes the world, only the one who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Right, that's about the same. Right. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, are you an overcomer? You feel uncomfortable saying yes. But the scriptures have said you are. Actually, that question again. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, are you an overcomer? If I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, there's many Christians that believe Jesus is the Son of God that's burning in hell. You just judge them. But John just now said that they're overcomers. Let's see what the other version says. For every child of an ulti, for every child of God defeats this evil world and we achieve this victory through our faith and we can win this battle against the world only only 
those who believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God by the word believe. It has a lot more meaning than what the dictionary let's, says. Let's take the King James. It's the most authoritative word of God. The one that's right next to it is the Amplified Bible. Even every theologian says the same thing. For everyone born of God is victorious and overcomes the world. And this is the victory that he overcome the world, continuing to pursue it, faith in Jesus, the Son of God, who is the one who is victorious and overcomes the world. It is the one who believes and recognizes the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's very simple. Okay. It says, who is the one who overcomes? Who overcomes? It's the one that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So I'm going to ask you the question again. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, are you an overcomer? Bottom line, 1 John 5, 4, 5, 5. It says that if you believe Jesus is the Son of God, you are an overcomer over the world. Am I yes. right or wrong in saying that? Yes, you're right. Now let's go to Revelation 3, 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raven, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. So he that overcometh. And how do we overcome? By believing Jesus is the Son of God. When Jesus brought out our name, never happened. But I believe the way I believe the way Gino Domaro believes in God is two different beliefs. Did you just not judge Gino Domaro? But let's just I, can judge, I, judge, I judge him to help. You judge Gino Domaro to help. Yeah. But the Bible is clearly saying if you believe Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus will never blot out your name. The word believe, all right, means to trust, rely, and follow him. All right, we, re we trust and rely that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you follow him? Do you obey his word? You don't. We, we don't either. Nobody does. I do. No, you don't. You say you told I believe, me. You. I believe I'm the few that's going to make it to happen. You're the few that's going to make it to happen. Then did you yeah. stop sitting? Yes. Milano, I clearly believe that you're one of the ones that are not going to. Well, we got to see that you guys make Jesus just believe and you're saved. Is so that not what the first child just said? Is there three billion Christians going to be in heaven? Sure, why not? Heaven is not that big, my friend. It says that it's an uncountable number in Revelation 7. Heaven is 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles. And that's the 3 billion people in heaven. And 1,500 miles high. Do you know how yeah. high is 1,500 miles high? Yeah. How high is that? It's a square cube. It's a square cube. Do you know how high is 1,500 miles high? Yeah. All right, when we go on an airplane, do you know that's only 7 miles high? Can you imagine how high? Of course. Do you, can you imagine how high 1,500 miles? The world is 24,000 miles. The entire Earth. But how do high believe, is... Do you, believe, do you believe that three quarters of the population is going to be in heaven? Sure, that's what the Bible says. You're sure, going against the teaching of Jesus. Jesus says only 2-3% of the population is going to get in heaven. It says 2-3%. What well, is well, a few to you? If I tell you, I'm at the market with a few people. Am I there with, with 10 people, 7 people, or 2 or 3 people? Milana, you're making the weakest argument I ever had in my life. The weakest argument? This is the worst. What does a few mean to you? Does a few mean the majority? Because you're saying the majority. Of three quarters of of a bill of, of eight billion people in heaven. How many people are going to today be Eight billion. Eight billion, right? Yeah. And you know only two billion claim to be Christian. No, there's three billion people. All right, let's say there's three billion. So yeah. the majority are not Christian, right? No, the the major the majority is people who call themselves. Christians. No, no, listen. That's not the majority. 
How many people are there on Earth? Eight billion, right? Eight billion. So fifty percent would be four billion. Three quarters of the three quarters. All right, is... forget the percentage. There's two okay. billion people that claim to be Christian. It's and three there's... billion. All right, let's say three billion. There's yeah, three billion believe, people. Do you, do you believe all those people are going to happen? No, wait, let me finish. There's three billion people that claim to be Christian, okay? Which means there's five billion people that claim not to be Christian, right? So right here, the majority is not Christian, right? And then the three billion that do claim to be Christian, most of them are false Christians, right? You cannot be a false Christian if you believe in Jesus. Uh, Catholic is a false Christian. They're not going to heaven. They believe in Jesus. They're not the right way, though. They're so, it has to be, so, so it has to be a right way. Because they believe in works. Anybody who no, believes I've, in a works-based doctrine. The Bible, the Bible says this, that no one can confess Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. So you can never say, I believe in Jesus, that the Holy Spirit was not given to you to say that. So, Bilal, do you believe a Christian can go to hell? The majority of well, hell is full of Christians. Is the Holy Spirit better go with it? No, definitely not. Well, the Holy Spirit never leaves you. I just read through where it said, who is in the Holy Spirit? No, that you're misinterpreting the scripture. That's not no. what it says. You, you think that person is not a Christian? No, he's not. That's the whole point of the scripture. So he was enlightened, he tasted the goodness of the Lord Enlightened and tasted. Yeah, the, what means enlightened? In the way that Judas Iscariot was enlightened and came to the knowledge, but he wasn't a believer. Judas was not a believer? No, he was not. Why does the Bible say that Satan entered him? So you're saying Judas was a believer? Of course he was a believer. But what if I showed you a scripture that said Judas did not Ju believe? Judas repented. What if I show you a scripture that Judas was not a believer? Would you stand corrected? Of course. You sure? Yes. All right, let me show you. Go to John 6. You sure you're gonna stand corrected? Of course, sure. Judas is a very, a very, very different topic to set up tradition. Whatever, let's even say this is a different topic. I just want to prove to you that Judas yeah, that's is fine. not believing. Okay. Go to John 6, I think it's 64, hold on. Uh, go to John 6, six 64. Hold on. John 6. Verse 64. from 63 it takes a good understanding the spirit gives life to the flesh counts for nothing the words I have spoken to you they are full of the spirit and life yet some of you who do not believe for Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him he went on to say this is why I told you that the one that no one could come to me unless the Father has established him. At this time, many, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Many of his disciples. All right, did, did, was Judas a believer? Was Judas a believer? Now you're talking. Okay, and I can't accept what right Judas, so I'm going to tell you what. When Judas betrayed him, what, what did he take him there? Because Judas saw the miracles. Judas saw him raise the dead. He Jesus was enlightened, Judas. he was tasted, but he didn't partake. Just the same way Pharaoh saw the miracles of God, but he still didn't taste. He didn't partake in following God. So you're saying Judas didn't believe in him? It just said it straight up. Judas was not a believer. 
Read it again. Let's, let's read it again. Yet some of you, that means a lot. Keep going. Of you do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. Who is the one who would betray him? He's not talking about betray Judas. He oh, went on to say this. This is why I told you the, that no one could come to me unless the Father has established him. Then they, it goes on to say this. From this time, and only Jesus knew this. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. They lost their salvation. They're in hell right now screaming. So, you know, it didn't just uh, talk about Judas? No. Like the one who betrayed him? No, he's talking. It's, it's mentioned in them. You're literally right. the only person in the world that doesn't agree that the one who betrayed Jesus was Let's see. Yet there are some of you. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not singular. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them, meaning a bunch of people, did not believe. All right, and Judas is one of that bunch. But now they're isolated. It's not Judas. mentioned in Judas. All right. Did not believe, and he would betray. They would betray him. Don't you talk about they? No. Okay. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe, and who would betray him. Judas. But when you when you turn around from Jesus and walk away, you betray him. But over here it's talking about Judas. Judas did not believe either. Uh, it doesn't tell me anything about Judas. But it saved the one who betrayed him. The ones that left from this time, many of the disciples left and no longer followed. They betrayed him. Then it goes on 6 to 7. Do you want to leave me too? Jesus asked the 12. Hey, if you let her, you're just being very stubborn enough. No, Anybody Judas in the world leave. would agree that the Judas one who betrayed him. Judas didn't leave him. He asked the 12. Did Simon Judas Peter betray answered, him? Lord, where shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Did Judas betray him? Yes, he betrayed him. All right. When he's, talking about, he's talking about the people who left him, his disciples. So this scripture is not talking about Judas? No. So he's Judas was a believer? He's talking about the disciples that left him. So Judas was a believer? Of course Judas is a believer then. But the scripture just said he did not believe. That's unbelievable. That's not. It That's doesn't amazing. say. It doesn't say Judas. Let me read it in other in other interpretations. As you're saying, you're 100 percent sure it's Judas. Okay, let's compare them. All right. But some of you refuse to have faith in me. Jesus said this because from the beginning he knew who would have have faith in him. He also knew which one would betray him. All right, that was the good news. Which one? All right, well, he said which one? No, I'm that's talking. the good news. Let's, let's read it in the LT. Oh, but but some of you do not believe me, for Jesus knew from the beginning which ones did not believe, which ones. There was many. That's, which ones did not believe, and he knew who would betray him. That, all right, go to all the right. King James. The King James says, but there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, that believed not, and who would betray him. Keep going all the way down to verse 71. From 64 to 71? He said that he spoke of Judas. Let me see. Therefore, I say unto you, that no man can come to me except were given to him of my father. From this time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then Jesus said unto them, the twelve, Will ye also go away? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe, and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the God. He said, We believe. Keep All right. Going. The words of eternal life, and we believe. And are sure that you are the Son of God. Keep Jesus believed. Keep going. The Judas didn't say that. Okay. Peter said that. Jesus answered 
have I not chosen you, the twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spoke of Judas, Isaac, the son of Simon, for he knew that he for he faith. for he knew for he for he it was that since he traded. Tra That's what it's talking about. Only five verses. Of the twelve. Five verses back ago, he said the word that betrayed him. Let me just get over here. Have not I chosen you, the twelfth, and one of you is a devil? He speaks of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he, for he, for he it was. I don't understand this. For he it was that for should he it betray was that him. Should betray him. For he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelfth. Again, he's saying the one who betrayed him to Judas. And just five verses back, he said the one that the one that betrayed him did not believe. Yeah, Judas, Judas was included. Judas was included with that. And it says he didn't believe. So Judas never believed in him. No. What did it say? Is many of his many of his disciples no longer followed him. I don't know. That those are the other. He had over 70 disciples. Why does his disciples no longer follow him? Did they believe in it? Probably not. Brent, you cannot be a disciple of Jesus if you don't believe Brent. Brent, it. Brent, they just, just said straight up. The now one who betrayed him did not you, believe. Now you know what I'm talking about, the word belief. Bilano, it just said that the one who betrayed him did did not believe you're totally ignoring scripture. I believe anybody that would ignore such clear scriptures does not have the Holy Spirit. I don't believe you're saved. I hate to sound so harsh, I swear to God. I don't mean to be mean. I have nothing against you. I never met you. Well, you never no, did nothing wrong to me. I know it. I'm just I speaking it. straight up. I have, I, have a, I have a problem. The problem I have is with the word belief. Let me tell you how I interpret the way believe, all right? Okay. Tell them maybe you live in the same house. Okay? And every day, every morning, me and you, we go to work together. We get in the car. We go to work, all right? So I'm going to paste a picture here just to let you know exactly what I mean by the word believe. Okay. Me and you live in the same house. In one morning, we're cooking breakfast, all right? We eat breakfast, and then we're out the door, we leave, we go to work together, me and you, all right? Okay. And while you're driving, you're driving the car, you hit your forehead, and you start to say, you ain't done it, Munam. I forgot to turn off the stove, okay? Okay. So now you want to turn back to go home and turn off the stove. But I stop you and say, no, 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 Milano, I did it before I left. I'm 100% sure I turned off the stove. I saw it was on, I turned it off. All right? Now, Milano, are you going to believe me? No. You're not going to believe me? If I told you I'm 1,000% sure, the stove was on and I turned it off right before I left. No, because you was jealous of my house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the difference in belief. If you turn the car around and go back home and say, yeah, yeah, I believe you, but I just want to make sure. Let me just make sure. Let me go back home and check. You do not believe. You didn't believe what I said. But if you look at me and say, oh, good, you turned it off, and then start driving so we could go to work, you took my word for it. You believe me. That's what belief is. You trust that what I said was true. Is that a good interpretation of belief? Yes, it's a very good interpretation. But if you try to say it, I know you're not lying, but let me turn back home just so I can make sure. And then you turn the car around and go home. You're not a believer. You didn't believe me. 
That's what I believe. The Bible talks about the word belief. All right, and if I come to the house and I see the house is on fire, then I was a liar. Say, and no, and I say, I don't believe the house is on fire. They did the other. Exactly. But if you come home and see the house was on fire, that means I was a liar. We know Jesus is not a liar. And Jesus said, if you believe, you shall never be plucked out of my head. That's I'm my gonna, whole argument. I'm going to take you, his word. I'm going to take his word believe, for it. If you believe in Jesus and you don't obey his word, the body you have to obey. Body you have to add in to obey the commandments. That's Jesus' word. No, those are not the commandments he's talking about. He's, he's not talking about that. We're not talking about the commandments. We're not talking about this Mosaic law. Then what are you talking about? How do you lose your salvation here? How? It's, it's very simple. John 3.36 Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not have life. All right, Pedmaga, how do you lose your salvation? It just told you if you don't obey Him. How? Obey how? Like what? You will not have eternal life. All right, uh, how do I disobey Him? How do you disobey Him? Be holy, for I am holy. And what do you consider holy? Of saying no to unrighteousness, not living like the devil, and living the way Jesus does. Do you live the way Jesus did? The Bible says that we must live like Jesus did. Do you believe that Jesus used to fall in sin every now and then? No, no. Well, you do, so you're not living like Jesus. But I was given, I was given grace, more All grace. Right, so you can given. say that a little bit. But we must live. Like Jesus did. You're not living like Jesus did. I don't understand what you're saying. You don't live like Jesus did because Jesus never fell into sin ever. You fall into sin daily. So that means the, the word of God, you're calling it a liar that we cannot live like Jesus did. That's why I'm telling you a lot of that. There's going to be maybe 98% of the Komania, 99% of the Komania in hell. Bilano, the Bible calls us to be holy, for he is holy. We are not holy if by us. If you're in adultery. No, that's not what it says, beloved. That's not the way to be holy. Talk, being holy God, is. Being holy God is not our performance. Does God promote it? Be, being holy is not based on our performance. Being holy is putting on the holiness of Jesus' performance. Why do you, you fail to recognize the scripture? Because whoever you fail to recognize the other one's actions. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Um, but whoever disobeys the Son will not have eternal life. Do you know what that word disobeys is? What? It's literally the identical Greek word that was used right before it. Whoever believes and disobeys is the same word. Whoever believes that Jesus. Quote that scripture again. <laughs> Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. All right. That word belief is literally the identical word in the Strong's. Uh, finish the verse. Whoever disobeys the Son will not have life. That word disobey. But will under God's punishment. That word disobey is the exact word it says does not believe. Whoever believes in, in Jesus and whoever does not believe. You're that just, sense. That that you're just sense. losing your mind over the word disobey and obedience. Right, disobey is all over the Bible. Obey, obey, obey is all over. It's I don't know about you. You could, you could be judged by your obedience, but I personally, I want to be judged by the obedience of Christ, not by my obedience. But it says this. In John fourteen twenty four, anyone who does not love me will not obey my teachings. You don't love Jesus if you don't obey him. I'll agree. If, if we know him, but do not obey his commandments, we are liars, and the truth is not in us. I don't believe you know him, Bilal. I truly uh, believe you never 
came to you, the good you, did I really feel sorry for that? I've never did any type of home on old business. Good for you. Sell, selling cars, doing the rules. Good for you. The only, the only home on old business I did was the only thing was to tell fortune. Oh, and that was do that. What, 100% of my income was to tell fortune. And how did you get out of it? I, but when I heard the gospel, the conviction of the Holy Spirit told me to leave it. I busted my signs with $1,400, and that was 21 years ago. All right, what do you do now? I do flooring. Flooring. Yeah. All right, I'm pretty sure you do good out of work. Of course I do. But that's not the only way to sit, you know. No, I'm not saying that's the only way to sit. I'm saying if you don't if you believe in Jesus, that means you don't trust him. During this phone call, you committed sin. By anger. Uh, by telling me you mopped the floor with me. I believe that's sin to compare studying the word with a brother to mopping the floor. I believe that's sin. No, what is like in terms of mopped the floor with me? I showed you overwhelming scriptures. All right. That, what, what that defiled your, your, your belief. Would it be nice to be a top man for Jesus? Hey, Jesus, I'm off the floor with you. Do you think that would be said? I'm not talking to Jesus. I'm talking to you. When you talk to God's people, you're talking to Jesus. I don't believe that eternal security is God's And I don't believe you're a God's child. I know, I know that. It's no disrespect, personally. Touch and it's no disrespect. I know. I believe eternal security is a demonic doctrine. But keep in mind, people. you don't know anything about the way I live. So you're just no, assuming. I don't, I don't know you. No, I'm not, I'm not talking. You're assuming. I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking to you personally. I'm talking about the doctrine. You know but you must be assuming I'm some crazy sinner. Do you know? No, I don't know you, Tony. Do you, do you want to know where eternal security, where did it come from? Where you think it came from? Go ahead. I'll tell you where it came from. Satan tells Eve, you shall not die if you eat of the tree. It started from Satan in the garden. He promised her eternal life with no penalty of disobeying God. No, I believe you're a doctor, Caper, that I'll explain why. Adam and Eve were created in God's image, correct? It was just like Jesus. It was just like Adam, God. It is a, Adam and Eve. Right? Yes. And Satan came to them. I said, you need to become more like God. No, he didn't tell them Yes, that. he did. He said, if you, if you eat this fruit, you will become like God. So why no, would they want... Evil. All right, right. knowing good and evil, right? right? What is the knowledge of good and evil? The knowledge of good and evil is to know that there's an evil and there's a good. He wants them to partake of the knowledge of good and evil so they become, they could become like God, right? Right. Now, they were already created in God's image. Satan was lying that they're not already like God. He said, no, you need to have the knowledge of good and evil to become like God. So, all right, here's what's going on here. I believe in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5, says that whoever overcomes is the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And then Revelation 3 was told, he that overcomes will be clothed in white garments. All right, I believe that because I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and he died and rose again, God has clothed me with his righteousness. And now I am made in the image of God. I am born again. And I am just like Jesus. As he is, so am I in this world. Now, I believe that I am just like Jesus in my spirit. But here you come 
and tell me, no, Tony, you need to do right and wrong to be more like God. So my way, you sound like the serpent. What is my message to you overall? Your message to me is, in order to become God's child, I need to know the difference between right and wrong and follow the right. My message, my subliminal message to you is straightforward. Repent and believe. Your message is straight up. You don't have to repent of your sins. Just believe in Jesus. You need to repent of your sin of unbelief. There's one sin no, that you have to repent that, of. Forget that garbage word. All right, find me a script. Find me a find me a garbage scripture. Don't repent of your sin. <laughs> no, <don't. laughs> if you can find me a scripture that says repent of your sins to be saved. What must I do? To be saved. It's almost like it out this year in Ohio. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. Never, never, never go to one swat or swap the sauce. Believe, repent, and be baptized. That dream will get you in heaven. That's not what it says. That's not what it says. That's not what uh John What Peter said. Peter said this. All right, hold on a second. That's not what uh Acts sixteen thirty one says. I'm not talking about Acts sixteen thirty one. You just said Acts. you just now said what must I do to be saved? Yeah. I meant and believe in the Lord Jesus. I do for that but, but you forgot you forgot the other two requirements. There is no other requirements. Repent, believe and be baptized. Is that what the scripture says? Let me show you the scripture. Is that what that says or does it say the way I say it? Let's Acts sixteen thirty one. Acts sixteen thirty. All right. Acts chapter sixteen verse thirty. This is the Philippian jailer when Paul and Silas were in jail to the earthquake cave. This is what the jailer asked him, and he brought them out and said, "Sirs, what must I do to be saved?" That's a good question. And they said, "Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ." and you shall be saved. They never said, repent of your sins. They never said anything like that. Acts 2, 37. Yeah, Peter's, words, Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Acts 2.38 again? Yeah. Hold on. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Here's what it says. Repent. Why do they need to repent? Because they're not believing in Jesus. He's telling them to get saved. Repent. Start believing in Jesus. Repent when you obey. Change your mind. Believe in Jesus. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. It is being baptized into Christ that remits your sins. It's not talking about being baptized in the water, but it's being so baptized saying, in the Christ. You're saying throughout the entire Bible that has over 1,900 questions about sin. You're saying repent does not pertain to the word sin. It, repent only means one thing, to believe in Jesus. No, no, I never said it means to believe in Jesus. Okay. Repent mean? only means one thing, to change your mind from one decision to what another. does it mean spiritually? Could there is word. no spiritual. Who did know that? It's simply one it? word. Change your mind. That's it. That's all it says. Okay. Instead of you going committing adultery, change your mind. Yep. Change your mind. Instead of you going living like the devil, change your mind. All right. So, 
And what about when it says that God repented? Did God commit sin that he had to repent of? No, he didn't commit sin. And wh why does it say that God repented? What does it say? Because God was going to kill them all. So was that sin that God was repenting of? No, repent doesn't mean change your mind. Oh, it doesn't mean change your mind? It doesn't mean change change your mind spiritually. When he talks about repent, I never said it means God, change your mind spiritually. To change no, your mind of whatever physically, physically change, change your, your mind of whatever subject we're talking about. I didn't eat turkey. I ate steak, and I changed my mind. Exactly, that's a repent. Okay, does so it change your mind? Like, you don't believe repent is make yourself right with God. If that's the subject, then it could be that. Okay, it well, depends on the subject. subject. It's saying stop living like Satan. Change your mind. Never. Show me the scripture. Show me the scripture. Come and help stop living like Satan. Go to Ephesians. This is my last scripture. Demerabe don't, don't say. Demerabe don't say stop living like Satan. <laughs> okay, go. go. You're very funny, Tony. Go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter two. <laughs> You go to Ephesians chapter two, which is the heart of one saved always saved. The heart of one saved always saved. But let me let me give it to you the real way. It, it's, it's explained. All right. Have you heard that the Lord is one? As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Where what verse are you? First one. Oh, all right. Go ahead. As for you, Tony, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live, past tense, when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air. Who is the ruler in the kingdom of the air? I was on a very confused where I'm reading a different version. She like you, I mean, do not inspire me. <laughs> Let me go to the true Bible. Hold on. All right, go ahead, I got it. Okay. As for you, you, now you always take this personal, so I can say, I can mention your name. No, As go ahead, I'm not taking personal, go ahead. Okay. As for you, Tony, you was dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live, which is past tense, when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air. Who is the ruler in the kingdom of the air? The devil. Correct. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So there's the Holy Spirit who lives in a person and the spirit of Satan who lives in people. They're great. Right, yeah, it's talking about we were okay. children of Satan before. The, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So if you're disobedient, you have the spirit of Satan, not this, the Holy Spirit. All of us used to live among them at one time. We used to live like them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires. The flesh has the desire of hell, right. Satan. Following its desires and thoughts. So my, talk, my flesh has thoughts and my flesh has desires. Is that amazing? All right. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath or deserving of hell. All right. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ in order that in the coming age he might show the uncorruptible riches of his grace expressed in Christ Jesus to us in Christ Jesus. 
For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works that no one could boast. Everybody stops right there, Tony. Verse 10, you must read. For we are created in Christ Jesus to do good works. We must do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. Now, you're ready for the meaning of the scripture. I can't wait. Don't get offended the way I'm going to tell you this. No, I promise I won't. Okay. Janessa Exorcism and Linda Blair. Yeah. Right there, buddy. Okay. It's already yeah. funny. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Now Jesus comes to Linda Blair. And he comes and he takes away her sins. Because Linda Blair says, I believe in you and make you my Lord and Savior. All right. Linda Blair, he takes all those cuts on her, he stitches her, he washes her, he combs her hair, and he makes her wujo. Can Linda Blair say that I saved myself? My good works saved me? Oh, I know the whole problem here, Bila. No, up to that very point, it was Jesus who saved her. It was Jesus who washed and cleansed her. Now, in her sanctification process, Linda Blair goes back, I shinopis, I told the living yes up, and she starts living, not holy. All right. It's Linda Blair who was washed, who was cleansed, but goes back like a dog going back to its vomit. Do you understand the scripture now? I, I understand this the whole at, problem. This, this was at the beginning of the Christian acceptance. Not the latter, the former, at the beginning. It was by grace he was saved. He had mercy on us. Oh, like, so a dead, like a dead dog at the side of the road. Only at the, the beginning we had grace? At the beginning. At the beginning. You and now we're grace. saved by our work. Do you know what's grace? Grace is Jesus on the freeway and saying, stop, you're going the wrong way. The bridge is out. And oh, you're not listening oh to him. God. That's the grace is the warnings. Let me just make sure I understand what you're saying. Okay. Go ahead. When we got saved, we were saved by grace. Yes. But now that we are saved. Mila. But now that we are saved, it is no longer grace. We it is by obedience. We keep we keep ourselves in obedience to Christ. We keep ourselves saved. We keep ourselves in obedience to Christ by asking for forgiveness. All right, by reconciling our relationships to God through confession. By so, living holy lives, so, right. so it is, and, and trying it, to get rid of our sins. So it is Jesus that saved you, but it yes, is done, you. Done his part. But it is you that is keeping yourself safe. Why does he say, just like a pig goes back to the mud, I bother to yell? No, so I'm not going to try to disprove you. I just want to okay. make sure I okay, understand ahead. what you're saying. Go ahead. It is Jesus that saved you. Yes, he but it's me. He you. Me. He cleansed me. And it's you that are keeping yourself safe. It is me that's not turning away and breaking our relationship. It's, so it's, it's you. Me. It's you that's holding yourself. Yeah, it's up to me. So Jesus saved you. If I deny him, am I saved? Well, Jesus saved you, but it's you yeah. that is holding yourself safe. I'm holding our relationship. I'm maintaining a relationship with Christ. Is it the Holy Spirit that is sealing you? Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one. So is it in Jesus the that Holy, is sealing you? The Holy you? Spirit convicts me of sin and tells me how to live. All right. 
And when the sin comes to my door, and I recognize that sin because of the Holy Spirit, what does the world mean? As you're friends with the world. Indeed, you're doing things that sinners do. So if you partake with sinners, that means you become an enemy with God. Your flesh is, but not your spirit. Who says your flesh is, but not your spirit? Paul in Romans chapter 7. What he says? It says that even when I commit sin, it is not I that commit it, but my flesh. All you guys are happy that Paul sent that scripture. You probably hate Paul, don't you? Because it gives you a license to sin. If Paul did it, we could do it too. So thank us. Let me guess, you hate Paul. I love Paul. Well, why? Because you yourself said that we're no longer under grace. I'm not saying we're under grace. I'm saying the greatest part of grace is the warning. Yeah, but earlier you said that we're only saved by grace, but then after we're saved, there is no longer grace, but it's our grace, own power. Grace, grace was this, that Jesus didn't need to come and wash us. Jesus didn't need, all right, to cleanse us. So are you under exactly. grace right now? Of course we're under grace. But to me, grace is more of a warning. All, all right. right, but grace is what got you saved, correct? Grace is what got me saved. It is grace what's keeping you saved? His grace is what's keeping me saved by him forgiving me when I break and violate his word. But you but said earlier how? it's you that's keeping yourself saved. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm severing. I'm saving my relationship with God. But that's by not what first Peter says. By obedience to Christ. A disobedient Christian is led by Satan. So you that's keeping yourself saved. Do you see the problem with that? Is there a problem with that? You're the one who's keeping yourself safe. It is Jesus that saved you, but now since you're Jesus, saved... Jesus saved me by me trusting and believing. But now you that's keeping it. As I'm disobedient. And I continue in my disobedience. Do I go to heaven? But it's your... But it's your did you that if, I disown, if I disown him, do I go to heaven? If you disown him, no, there's no way a Christian could totally disown Jesus. That's such a lie. No, it's not a lie, Bilal. Paul said that Hermeneus abandoned the faith and he became shipwrecked. All right? Hebrew says that there's no sacrifice for them to do no more. There's no, no more forgive, God part. forgive me. You don't read um, Hebrews 6 wrong. Paul says that anyone who lives according to the flesh, all right, is hostile and enemy to God. But you didn't finish Romans chapter 7 when Paul said, when I sin, it is not me that sin, but it is my flesh. It's the devil. It's the devil who's making you sin. No, no, not the devil. It's his flesh. What do you think is the flesh? That's not the devil. I promise it's you. It's not the devil? No. Let me, can I prove it to you? The flesh is not the devil, Bilal. There's nothing, what there's nothing the you can show me that can make what, it, what is the flesh? Up. It's our flesh, our sinful flesh. What is the flesh? It's our sinful flesh. It's not the devil. Why is the, if the flesh sinful, what is it? What was that? What is the flesh? What is hostile to God? Satan is hostile to God. And it's our flesh also. It's not exactly. only Satan. The flesh, the flesh and Satan is, is one in spirit. They're not one. The flesh is not spirit. They're one. The flesh and Satan are one together. No, they're not. Show me where it says that. What do you say? It's in Romans 7? Romans 7 speaks all about the spirit and flesh. Okay, let me read for you, so you can know. Do you not know, brothers and sisters, that I'm speaking to those who know the law? 
that the law has authority of someone only as long as that person lives. For example, by Amatavrogalikko, where it says flesh, where, where that scripture, the law and sin, hold on. Uh, Romans 7, 7, what shall we say then? Is the law sinful? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would not have known what sin was. Had been, not been, for the law. For I would not know how, I would not know what conceiving really was, if it was not law. And said, you shall not covet. But since seizing its opportunity, afforded by the commandments, produced in me every kind of coveting. For apart from the law, sin was dead. Once I, once I, I'm a part of the law, but one commandment came, sin separated to life, and I died. I found out the very commandment that was indeed to bring life actually brought death. For sin, seizing the opportunity of afforded by the commandments, deceived me and taught me the commandments, me to put to death, so that the law is holy, and the commandments is holy, righteous and good. Did what is good, then became dead to me, by no means, nevertheless, in order that sin might be recognized as sin, it was used what is good to be, bring about my death. <coughs> I'm not understanding what I'm reading. You don't understand? It is a little uh, bit confusing at first. But if you keep reading, it. if you keep reading Romans 7, what Paul okay. is talking about, the whole chapter he's talking about, my flesh and my spirit are at war against each other. <laughs> there's, there's nothing good in my flesh. For we know that the law is spiritual. I do not do, but what I aim to do, and if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good, as it is. It is no longer I myself who do it, but sin living inside me. Right? Can you now, hear me is living inside you, that's a spiritual problem. Right, but did you hear what he said? Even when I sin, it is not I that's doing it. It is my flesh. But it's, it's Satan living inside. No. The flesh. It's not Satan. Listen, a sin is Satan. No, it's not. Uh, okay, you can say it's not. How about, we, how about we let James say what Satan is? I'll tell you what James says right now. Here's what he says. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then with lust and conceived, it brings forth sin. You're tempted by your own lust. It's not by Satan. What lust? That's living inside no, guess, you. That's what they, that Satan is living inside no, not, you. Uh, what means enticed? I'm sorry to say this, Milano, but you have found a way to take the blame off of yourself and put a blame on Satan. You are blaming Satan for your sins. That's why you can tell yourself I'm righteous, I'm a follower of Jesus. I just fall into sin. It's not me that's sinning, but it's Satan. No, it's not an excuse. It sure it's sounds like it. Here's what, it's, here's what Paul says. All right, I do not do what is no longer I who do it, but it's sin living inside me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's laws. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body 
that is subject to debt. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ. So then I, then in my, then I myself in my mind I'm a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. Do I have the big verse you just thought read? Of course, it's a big verse. What was that last verse? Uh, uh, it's at the end of uh, Romans 7. Hold on. All right. All right. Here's what he says. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So Paul is saying, in his mind, he's serving the law of God. But with his flesh, he's serving the law of sin. So Paul is a sinner. He's literally committing sins. But in his mind, he's already repentant toward God. So with the spirit in mind, he is a servant. Paul was under, under sanctification. He was growing in Christ. He was made in Christ at that point. No, this was towards the end of his life. Romans 7 is one of the last books he wrote. He was, I don't know about that. This was right before he was beheaded. Was it? Yeah. I don't know that. Romans is one of the last books he wrote. Flesh. The flesh. Why is God telling us to put on the full armor? To stand against the devil. Absolutely, the devil has no power over us. Because, the, relationship. because the devil is a liar. His darts that he throws at you. It mm -hmm. starts to make you think that you're not righteous. He's always lied to you, the way so, he lied to Adam and Eve. Okay, does Satan work in vain? I don't know about that. If, if Satan doesn't believe that he could deceive you to come with him and help, because if you believe in Jesus, it means you're secured. I don't care yes. what Satan believes. All I know is Jesus you said... Are you guaranteed for heaven? Yes, I am guaranteed. I'm going by what Jesus Satan, said. Satan is working against you for no reason at all. I don't care what Satan believes. Satan is a dummy. The Bible warns you about Satan. All right, why, well, is he, why is he giving you warnings? Satan is going to battle against God. It's impossible for Satan to beat God. So he's a why dummy. Did he, why did he ask for Peter? Well, Satan is a dummy. Why are you taking his belief so serious? If Satan's Satan, stupid enough to think that... Do not undermine Satan. He's more more powerful and more smarter than any human on the planet. I think he's stupid because he thinks he could destroy God. He's not stupid at all. If anything, Satan was one of the most smartest, intelligent well, angels. Does Satan, have a try, does Satan have a chance to destroy God? But he, he stops God in a lot of ways. So he's... But can he overcome God? No, he can't overcome him. But he believes he can. But God allows him. So he's stupid. God, God allows him because he's, he's a very powerful angel. No, I don't think I'm going to go by what Satan believes. I'm going to go by what Jesus said, that he who believes on me shall never perish. The word believe is, is the question we need to find out. Uh, I believe First John five five already confirmed that he that overcome it is the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. I'm gonna go by that. I'm not gonna go by what Satan thinks. I'm not gonna go by what the way you interpret sin. I'm not gonna put the fate of my. What? Why did God tell Cain, if you do what's right, you'll be accepted? I don't care about Cain, really. I'm going to go by what Jesus told me. You don't go by what God says? I'm not going to go by what Cain says. No, we're not talking about Cain. We said God told him, if you do what's right, I'll accept you. And I am doing what's right. I believe in his son, Jesus. You don't, you don't believe if you're in disobedience to, to God, you disobey, you, you, you well, deny him. You know, you never gave your interpretation on First John 5 5. You just totally bypassed that. I did. I did. You no, you I did. Didn't, I, I promise you. I told you about the belief. No, by the word belief. 
I have a by, problem with the word proof. My phone is recorded, and I can promise you, you never gave your interpretation on that scripture. Okay. What should we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? That right there is a very big statement for eternal security. It's actually one, one of my favorites. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptizing in Christ were baptized into his death? We are therefore buried with him through baptism in his death. All right. And we was raised from death to the glory to the Father that we may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in death like this, we will certainly also be buried with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin or the body ruled by Satan might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin now if we died with him we believe that we will also live with him there's a lot of contingencies here Tony that we died to sin for we know that since Christ was raised from the dead he cannot die again no longer the mystery over him that here's the problem you know, and I'm not talking down on you honest to God right. you don't have the revelation of the difference between body spirit and soul in every every verse you're applying only to your physical life. You don't recognize that when we got saved, only one third of us got saved. That's 33%. So far, only our spirit is saved. Our flesh and our mind, they haven't been saved yet, but they will be saved the day Jesus comes back we will be perfectly safe. Right now, only a third of us is saved, which is our spirit. And God, God gave it us the Holy Spirit as a down payment for our salvation. It's like a partial payment, Ephesians calls it. He gave us a payment that right now only our spirit is saved. But when he comes back, we're going to be fully saved, which is our glorified bodies. Right now, our flesh is not even saved yet, but our spirit is. Our flesh can never be saved. It will be at the day of the rapture. No, it will not. It will be a glorified body. That's what I mean. It's going flesh, to be and blood, flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God. That I'm talking about our body. It's going to be changed. It yeah, has to be changed. Gonna, that's gonna what be it's going to be saved. Now, here, here's what I'm talking about. Romans 6.15 What then shall we what then shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace by no means. Now 16. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to debt, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. So if I follow sin and disobedience, I'm slaves to Satan. Your pleasures. Exactly. All right. It says that you ma your master, all right, it uses the word master. Do you not know that when you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, you are a slave of the one you obey? Whether you are a slave to sin, which leads to death, 
or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. Does obedience lead to righteousness? It's biblical. Obedience does lead to righteousness. But you're in Romans yeah. chapter 6, right? Right? Yeah. So disobedience <laughs> leads to wickedness and a, 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 a broken relationship with the one who called you. But you're in Romans chapter 6, right? Yeah. But right. thanks be to God. Do you know? You're in Romans. I know. You're in Romans chapter 6. Yeah. And it's talking about that obedience leads to righteousness, correct? Yeah. If you go back just one chapter, not even a full chapter, just a couple verses, go back to Romans 5, 5, 19 to be specific, but if you read the whole context, but look at what it says in Romans 5, 19. It's making a comparison between Adam and Jesus. The comparison he makes here is that Adam created, Adam committed sin. And because of Adam's sin, the whole world became sinful nature. And then it compares it to Jesus, the opposite. Because of Jesus' obedient life, the whole world, but well, not the whole world, I mean, is eligible to be saved. This is what it says in Romans 5, 19. For as by one man's disobedience, Adam, many were made sinners, even so, by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. This is the, by the obedience of Jesus. We're not made righteous by our obedience, but because of the obedience of Jesus, we are made righteous. Okay, let me tell you my interpretation. Because of Jesus' obedience, all right, not listening or not partaking with sin, but practicing righteousness, his obedience, all right, now I come to him, all right, and he washes and cleanses me and makes me righteous. Okay, what happens when you get dirty again? That's the problem we face. That's what it says in Romans 22, 622. But now you have been set free from sin and have became slaves to God. The benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. All right? If I don't practice holiness, it doesn't lead to eternal life. It's a direction is given you. What benefit did you reap at the time when the things are now armed? The things result in death. But now you've been set free from sin and have become slaves to God. You understand? Are you a slave to God? Yeah, I have actually. And what, do you... what, if, what about the people who live like Satan? Are they slaves to God? Their flesh. The answer, no. Their flesh. Yeah. Their flesh is a slave, slave to Satan, but their spirit is a slave to God. I myself, with the mind, I serve the law of God, but with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. That's Romans 7.25. So what are you telling me with that, Tommy? That you can serve the God with your heart and with your mind while you're serving sin with your flesh. There's no penalty for it. The penalty you might suffer down here on earth, but not in heaven. Who cares about that? Not in heaven. You will not lose your salvation, don't we? Tony, is adultery, is adultery, having, is having a girlfriend, is it fun, is it fun to have a girlfriend? Is it fun to have a married? girlfriend? Yeah. While you're married? Yeah. Not to be. Then you're not a man. Whatever. Because 99.99% nine, is the answer is yes. The no, most funny thing is for you to have a relationship more than one girl. That's not fun for you. I find it fun to be with my wife. Let's go back 20 years ago. 25 years ago, yes. 
The answer is yes. No, to be right. that fun. Is it fun to do drugs while in Vegas? To be with Gaja? Yes, it's fun. Sin, sin is desirable to man. To the flesh. Huh? To the flesh. To man. To the flesh. Mankind. Look at the flesh, mankind. No, the scriptures are to the flesh. But I don't know why you're wavering in the word and using the word flesh. Because in Romans 7 it says that in the mind I serve God, but in my flesh I serve him. So it's okay to serve, it's okay to serve Satan, but in your mind as long as you love Jesus. It's not that it's okay, it's just the reality of the situation. That's how everybody is. Okay. So then I can continuously do evil, which is a lot of fun. And I believe in Jesus, and it's fine. It sounds like your desires haven't changed yet. Since 22 years, my desires changed. Then why are you saying sin is fun? Because only, uh, only a liar will say that they're not. Here, that's what I mean. You still desire it, but you're just fighting not to do it. I hate sin. No, I you, can't stand sin. I you, can't stand sin. But you're saying it's fun. When a Christian devotes, gives their heart devotedly to Christ, they become like Christ. They hate wickedness and they love righteousness. That's the problem, Milano. You think what the Bible talks about you becoming in the image of Christ. You think it means that your works, your performance is just like Jesus. It's not talking about that, Milano. It's talking about your born again spirit. You're a new creation. God gave you, the literally old, gave the you. The old is dead. The old it spirit is dead. What's the old spirit mean? Your old man. The Bible calls it the old man. The old man right. of the heart. Your spirit. So then the old, the old man I was an adulterer. No, you're looking at the flesh body. Your spirit he's talking about. Man, when we were born, we are born a trinity, just like God. You're made up, made up of body, spirit, and, and your mind. Okay? Your spirit was a sinful nature passed down from Adam. But then, the day you believed on Jesus, your spirit literally died with Jesus on the cross, never to be returned again, and he gave you a brand new spirit. It was a brand new creation, a new birth, born again. He gave you a brand new spirit, not a brand new flesh, because you still look the same. I'm still ball-headed. Nothing changed about my body. The only thing that changed the day I got Tony, saved. You have, you, with all the respect, you have a lot of philosophies. Let's go to common sense. The chair is in my tall, adult, well done my good and faithful servant. Because you believe in a son Jesus. And that's why he, well done, you did yes. a good job? Yes. A good job means you did something good. First John 5.5, 5, which you still rejected, says that he that overcometh the world is he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And the word believe, Tony means to follow him. All right, I'm thinking how it don't make sense. Look at how it don't make sense. Let's translate the word believe the way you do. First John 5, 5. He that overcomes the world is the one who follows him and believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Correct. That did that's not sound way. right. That's the way to answer. No, Milano, um, I hate to say it, but I got to shake the do dust off know, my feet. Do you know there's translations in the Bible that says in John 3, 16, yeah. that the one who trusts, relies, and follows Jesus will be saved? May the Lord rebuke those translations. To theologians, my friend. May the Lord rebuke those theologians. <laughs> the, problem, the problem is the word believe. You guys take that to a literal... Just believe. 
Yeah, I believe That's it's easy to be saved. I believe it has nothing to do with Jesus. On Jesus' own words. You're the right. one who said you're keeping yourself saved. But first Peter says that it's the power of God that is keeping you, not you. Jesus' own words, you cannot be my disciple. You could, that means even though you're saying Jesus is Lord, you're not my disciple unless you obey him. All right, well, I've, there's come the point to where I have to wipe my hands of this. I can't try to convince you anymore. I think I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be convinced. I'm trying to show you scripture that this doctrine, not you, Tony, personally, a lot of people. And I believe you're just That's what you believe. You're entitled. You're entitled to your belief. And I really pray that the seed of the planet. You said he was an easy believism. Very easy. Okay. That right there is what Satan wants people to believe. You're the one who said that you're not under grace. You're under your own Rome, power. Sorry. Romans 6. I got it on tape. Should we continue to sin? You're saying that we can continue to sin and we'll still make heaven. All right. Well, says, do you stand by every says, word? Do you stand by every word you said today? That grace is warning. All this two hour conversation we had. Do you stand by everything you said? The only thing, the only thing I, I, I should have never told you. Was kind of funny. I don't think it's okay. I want to take my mouth to floor with you. No, I'm obviously I. Uh, you apologize okay. for that. I know you don't stand by that. I mean, doctrinally, do you stand by everything you said? Everything I said, but the, the grace part, uh, Tony, I told you, I told you this about grace. That grace is what saved me. You understand that? When I sin, He has mercy and grace on me, and He's just to forgive me. To me, grace is Jesus standing on the highway and warning us, you're going the wrong way. But it is you that's keeping yourself safe. It's my decision to disown him or to remain faithful to so him. So your power. It's my decision to make heaven or to make choose hell. Doesn't God say choose for yourself? And how are you keeping Sir? yourself? How are you keeping yourself safe? By obedience to his By word. your obedience, right? By obedience to his word. All right, that's all I want to Christian is not supposed to be obedient. Tony, that's a very demonic thing to say. Now, to me, that is the most demonic thing you ever said. That it's your obedience what? that keeps you safe. Tell me why did why did you, why did you say this? This wants to give me two minutes every time. All right, but this will be the last two minutes. Yes, this will be the last two minutes. I'll let you have the last word. One thing I, one thing I, I, I like about you, Tony, is you have patience. A lot of people don't have patience. Probably not. Have... Have... No, you do. From, from a lot of people I talk to, Judas, the, let's go, Paul, Jesus. Who's going to know him better? Someone told. Dear friends, our God was very eager. I told them to write to you about the salvation we share. I felt compelled to write to you and to urge you to contend for the faith that was once entrusted to God's holy people. God trusted us and it was once entrusted to God's holy people. Here's what it says. Now Paul, uh, Jude is writing this letter and he will know, he had to write it, he was urgent, it's a very urgent thing. Yeah. And it's about, it's just about salvation. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They came in our churches, they talked to you, they talked to me. They are ungodly people, so that means they were for Satan, who pervert the grace of our God they pervert God's ways and oh, pervert is in a sexual matter. All right. They pervert God's grace for a license, for a morality, and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign Lord and Savior. And here's what it says, though you already know all this, I 
want to remind you. Now, why is you saying that this was taught to you? You heard about this, but Itu men belen, all right, are the Gabo doctrine. I want to talk to you again and remind you. And this is a very aggravating message. I want to remind you that the Lord, why is he bringing this up? I want to remind you that the Lord at one time delivered his people out of Egypt. When God delivered his people out of Egypt, he called him his firstborn son. But later on destroyed those who do not believe. They did believe. He brought them out of Egypt. They believed. And the angel who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned in their proper dwelling place. These he have kept in darkness, bound with everlasting change for the day of judgment. In a similar way, he's talking about past. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and their surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as examples of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. Why do they suffer? Why are their examples? Because they gave themselves up to Satan and they lived like Satan. And they, their, their consequences was eternal fire. In the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies. They reject authority and heap abuse on celestial beings. Do you know who celestial beings? The angels. No. Oh, no. We are celestial. Well, I am a celestial being. No, you're not. I'm going to tell you what. When Christ comes and lives with you, you are no longer of this world. Your home is no longer here. We're just passing through and become celestial beings. No, that's not the concept we're talking about. We're talking we're about children, the angels. We were children of the devil, now we're children of God. We're talking we're about the angels. The angel okay, that had sex with the daughters of men in Genesis chapter they, 6. They heap abuse and reject the and heap abuse on celestial beings. But even the angel, Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not dare himself to condemn him with slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. These people slander whatever they do not understand. And the very things they do understand by instinct as irrational animals do will destroy them. It's by what they're doing they're getting destroyed. Woe to them. They have taken the way of Cain. Who was Cain? Cain was of the devil. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's era. They have been, been, they have been You're destroyed. basically reading the book of Jude to me. Yeah. But here's the key. These people are blemishes at your love feast, eating with you. Without the swallows, corn shepherds, who feed only themselves, there are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind. Trees without fruit and uprooted twice dead. There are waves of the sea foaming up to shame, wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been reserved. Okay. If they secretly creeped in, creeped in among us and they converted the church from godliness to wickedness. All right. This message was about the salvation we share. This people was being polluted by demons. And they started believing demon theology. And Judas comes and reminds them. And he is, here's the character of God. God bring them out of Egypt. There was his children. But because of this disobedience, he destroyed and killed them. And they're not with him in heaven. Just like Sodom and Gomorrah, they gave themselves up to sexual morality and they lived disobedient to God. God burned them. They serve as an example to me and you, Tony. 
that disobedience takes a person to hell. This is God's character from the beginning, the flood with Noah. Only the righteous ones, all right, that practices righteousness was saved. The rest of the world was destroyed. If you continuously live disobedience and you don't think there's a penalty of hell's fire, Tony, you are in a false doctrine. No problem. All right, I promised I'd give you the last word. Go ahead. No, that, that's it. I mean, uh, that's it. I'm not that's even going to rebuttal after that. Okay. And the only thing, the last word is this. I don't know in this life ever I'll ever talk to you again. But I know this conversation was for one, one, two purposes. God sends a man to preach to another man. He says, blessed are the feet of those who bring the news. It has two purposes. Purpose number one, to save a person. And purpose number two, to condemn a person. I can agree with that. How? Talk to Monty. You have to do Milani, Milani, your name is not found in the book of life. But what's the reason? I did love you. I did follow you. I did obey you. All right? But no, Tony told you. And let me take you back to that day. All right? 51 years ago, 24 years ago, whatever it was. And this day will be brought up before God. It will be used to judge you. You were to save you. Words will save you or condemn you. Correct. But I can agree with that. But okay. just on the other side. If I said anything to offend you, it was out it of the way. Doesn't I matter. I, prob I probably said something to offend you too. The judge says I apologize for that. We talked about the Bible. Talked about God's divine word. Your opinion is one. My opinion is the other. Out of two people, one is right before God, and one is wrong before God. Well, in my hopes of this conversation, Milano, I believe that a lot of ground was covered from both yes. sides. Yes. I believe that the people that believe in eternal security, I believe I covered a lot of that ground. And I believe that you covered a lot of ground of the people that reject eternal security. So, not for the sake of us, for the sake of a lot of other listeners that might benefit from your words or my words, would it be all right with you if I unedited, I will not edit it, I promise you, put our conversation on my YouTube account that people can listen to? Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I promise you I will not uh, take anything out of context or add any edits or anything. The only thing that could that could hurt me, Tony, the 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 way we, maybe it came out wrong was about the grace part. You understand? All right. I believe that, that grace is Jesus warning us to live immoral lives. Well let me so give people, you now a couple minutes. People, to... people could people could take that and edit it and say that I don't believe in the grace. Alright, well let me let you clear it up. And I'm gonna put a note on the video that okay. towards the end of the conversation you clear yourself up <laughs> so I'll give you a couple minutes now to clear up what you meant uh, I would rather you not put it up alright alright if, if you would respect that God bless you I would rather you not put it up because we covered a lot of ground and the last thing I want is anyone to get hurt just confused you understand uh, about grace and theology. You understand? Of the study of God. There's a lot of new Christians that I gave you solid meat and they're only ready for being food. Well, you understand? I'm going to respect your wish and I'm not going to make the video on YouTube. I got over two and a half hours of recorded conversation, but 
just to let you know, every word I said within these almost three hours, I stand by that, not 99%, 100%. But since you feel uncomfortable posting it, there must be something that you're uncomfortable with, with something you said. Because what, what I understand is this, like a lot of pastors, they take one word and they make a video and 10 minutes later... No, I was, was, was going to make a three-hour video on editing. I wasn't going to cut anything in or out. Maybe I would just fix up the sound quality, but that's about it. Well, whatever I told you was the truth. I stand by it. Well, then why, then why is it not okay to play on YouTube? If it's the truth, why would you want to hold the truth for somebody? Then go ahead, go ahead and post it, that's fine. You sure it's okay? Yeah, that's I fine. promise you it's unedited. That's fine, but the only thing is, is if anybody says about the grace of God, or I believe that grace was only given to you right there, maybe I said something that I mis, I mispronounced it of what I believe. Well, let me give you these couple minutes now and clarify what you believe about that. <laughs> Okay. The Bible says straight that he is the one who called us out of light, out of darkness into light that was not us, that was him. Okay. He, he called us to salvation. <coughs> he saved us when we was filthy rags and we was dirty. He cleaned us up. And now that we're cleaned, let us not go back to the mud and get dirty again. Let us continuously practice righteousness and holy living unto God in obedience to his word. That's the um, that's the whole Bible right there. What a man must do to be saved is be obedient to Christ. Alright, just to clarify. You're saying right. that we are saved by grace the minute we get saved. But here's yes. my question to you. Go ahead. We are saved by grace. But are we kept saved by grace? Are we kept saved by grace? If, 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 if there was no grace, we would all be in hell. Do I understand you're saying that at the beginning of salvation, we're saved by grace? Yeah, but is grace, we're saved by grace. is grace no what keeps us safe? There was no works that we did. But is grace which also keeps us safe? My obedience to Christ keeps my soul saved. So that's not grace. It is grace. No, your obedience to Christ is not grace. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. And works would not be works. Works is the law. It's the Mosaic law. Your obedience is your works, too. Works is not obedience. Yes, have it I is. Brushed, have, I, have, I, have I brushed my teeth? Is that works? That's not obedience, either. It's obedience. Brushing your teeth in obedience? I'm confused. What's that? Brushing your teeth in obedience? Yeah, it's good for my body. It's not a work I'm performing. When I comb my hair, it's not a work. Actually, it is a work. <laughs> okay. But regardless, we're getting to our point. You're saying okay. that you're, I'll just give you the final word. I could choose, I could choose heaven or hell according to how I live. All right, so it's if, your, I disown, if I disown him, I go to hell. It's your performance that's keeping you safe. Of course, it's the believer. All right, so by grace, you got saved, but now you're by kept. Grace, by grace, I was saved. And now you're kept saved by your performance. True, true. Through continuously disobedience and the practices of sins, a man destroys his relationship with God that is no longer accepted but rejected, that his offering of sacrifice will no longer be accepted. All right, well, I'm glad you clarified your thought on that. I'll it's let you have the last word. And I good. hope that whenever I finish putting the video up, I okay. hope that you will personally go to my YouTube 
I listen to the whole thing again, and I pray to God that you repent of what you believe and get saved. I believe I'm repented already. All right. I believe that I live my life uh, in reverence and fear to God and obedience. Do I stumble? Yes, every man stumbles. Does he get up? Does he wash himself with Christ? He asks for forgiveness. Because without forgiveness, you understand, a man stands condemned. So we ask, we, ref we reflect on First John 1 9. He's faithful and just to forgive us. But living, living in sin and practicing it, grace is only a certain amount of time. It's not given for 50 years. There's a cutoff time, like the 10 virgins. All right. The virgins that was cut off, they didn't die. They were still alive. All right. And when they went to knock on the door, and me, Lingo, Lingo, you must, God was no longer listening to Or well, You pretty much made your point that okay. you believe that your obedience keeps you safe. Yes. I think that's a pretty good place to end it. That's a pretty good place. All right, I'm sorry it's, if I offended you in any way. No, no, Tony didn't. You, to you, got, you got me upset a little bit. We got a little bit heated on both sides. <laughs> and that's, what, that's what's called the debate. Text me when you, when, you, when you finish your video. Don't edit it. Don't I like promise it. you, D. God bless you. Our, how long did our phone call say we did? Let me see how long it's been. You did like three hours and 21 minutes. All right, three hours and 20 minutes. I didn't start <laughs> I didn't start recording until about 20, 30 minutes in. So right now, right. my okay. recording says it's two hours and 43 minutes. So I didn't record the beginning. But I got two hours and 43 minutes. And you'll see once I put up the video, it'll be right around there, two hours and 45 okay. minutes ish. So I'm not editing nothing. I might just make the sound a little better. God bless you, Tony. All right, God bless okay. you. Good. Good.